So are you tired of trying to find napkins to match your tablecloth and runners and napkin rings, the right color and the right style and the right texture? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you some budget ways that you can do your own runners. And of course you can make those into placemats, napkin rings and napkins that look fabulous and it will coordinate with your table and your dishes on a budget. Hi, I'm Bonnie Overman. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope my channel will inspire you to lead a more productive, creative, and stylish life at any age, always on a budget. In case you're wondering, I'll be 70 in October. And I say it because if I can do it, you can do it too at any age. I have confidence in you. I want to thank all my subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. You don't want to miss any of my spooky Halloween and my joyous Christmas videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. I'd kind of like to know what um, is your favorite of all the things I do. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to be breaking this down into three categories. And basically, we're talking about runners which of course you can translate into placemats if you want to, runners, napkins, and napkin rings today. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the burlap that you can buy by the roll and make into a runner. And you can make a matching um, napkin ring and how to kind of coordinate that with napkins. But it's so inexpensive, you guys. Okay, so burlap is number one, my most uh, budget friendly. Number two would be taking fabric and some kind of edging to make a really special table runner. You could use ruffles, another print. You could use a trim like tassels and Hobby Lobby is the best one. They have beads and they have leather fringe and they have all kinds of different uh, trims that you can put on a runner and make it spectacular or in a placemat for that matter. You could also cut out leaf shapes and glue them on the edge, which I'm gonna show you in one I made. And then you can make a coordinating napkin ring that goes with it. And my third category is what I had requested by two people is how I paint my zebra cloths. You know, I take regular heavy beige fabric and I paint it to look like a zebra skin. All right, you guys, it's time to start entertaining. It's time to start setting up those tables again and making memories with our friends and family. I can't wait. And you wanna have a really special table. And today's video will help you do that. Anyway, I hope you love it. I hope you get truly inspired and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Welcome to my table runner and napkin ring first part of my video I'm going to show you my four major types of table runners and how you can decorate them to look more custom you guys I first start out I'm going to start here on the right the burlap and this has got lace on it this is does, doesn't but I recommend I just want to show you the bolt it's 18 and a half inches wide they have them at Walmart Hobby Lobby I recommend getting the plain ones just so you don't have the lace it's a little more versatile. Now I also wanted to show you trim. If you don't like the plain edge of the burlap, you can put some of this cream colored trim from Hobby Lobby. Looks kind of boho. Makes the burlap look a little more elevated. Now, also, if you're gonna do burlap, and I really recommend it, you can use this spring, summer, fall, winter, Christmas time, anytime, is to make some ma matching napkin rings. I showed you this in another video. It's a wire edge burlap ribbon glued on a paper towel roll. See, it's as simple as that. Costs pennies to make. And look at all the different um, napkin rings you can make. This has got some frayed uh, rope, some a little gingham ribbon, and then a messy bow, just scraps of fabric. And look how cute that looks on the burlap. All right, now my next one I wanna show you, actually the next two, these two here, are fabric runners. Now I made these. So they have a dark brown one in the back and then I have this kind of country French one here. Now you can use ruffles to edge it. You can use some of this trim from over here or on the brown one, I just cut out little leaf shapes and glued them on the edge. This one has ruffles on it and you can do ruffles the same or a coordinating, coordinating fabric if you want to. Now, I left these napkin rings plain for a reason because you're gonna look down here and say, why do you have tags on your table? Well, you guys know, I always make these little clusters of things. 
And I just wanna show you, when you place that on, that napkin ring, how cute for fall. Going down the table and then put some sunflowers in your centerpiece, this costs nothing. It's literally a piece of raveled burlap and a little flower I was gonna throw away. And look what a cute tag it makes. Also, this one here, which has got lace, acorns, some burlap. Look how adorable that looks for a shabby chic type look. Just so cute. And I love it as a tag. And let's say you want to do it real inexpensive. One leaf and one paper stamped truck. And look how cute that looks on my black and white check. One over here. So you can embellish them. Let's say you want something very neutral on your table. That's a couple leaves, a half of a pumpkin from Dollar Tree Spray and pit berries. See how you can just take these things and completely decorate your napkin rings or tags. Because <laughs> look how cute they look. All right, so I've talked about the fabric ones here. So you can trim them and all kinds of things. Now on this one here, I just want to show you. I did a medallion at the point of this tablescape. This is a piece of trim from Hobby Lobby and I made a coordinating napkin ring. This one is actually covered with velvet and it has purple flowers on it. Now let's take a look at my last one back here. This one here is <laughs> an old uh, vinyl holiday tablecloth and I glued leaves. Remember how I told you guys to save all your leaves when you pull your flowers off? or cut your flowers, um, I made a whole table runner. You could do a placemat, you could do whatever, but look how cute that looks. And on this one here, I did some safari ribbon on the napkin ring and a safari napkin, which looks really cute. All right, so here's my ideas for table runners, how to customize them to your season, to your dishes, to your centerpiece, and make them all your own. Now stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to paint zebra cloth. So today I'm gonna to show you how I painted my zebra cloth. Let's take a look. So here's the setup. You've gotta have a tarp or something down that's gonna protect your table. You want some really heavy uh, canvas uh, material. And you're gonna need a pencil and a permanent marker, straight black paint with a very stiff brush. I use this old one. I also have some watered down burnt umber and I use this brush for that, and get lots of paper towels and everything. You will also want some you know, bowls of water. Here I have white and black paint. So here's my main paint I use. Black, matte. This is uh, vintage white. Use any cream paint. And these are not fabric paints, they're just off the shelf. Burnt umber, this is the most important one. You must have burnt umber. It is the best brown ever. So you're gonna start out by drawing your Vs. Now you can see here, see how I draw a V and they're very messy. See in another V up here. And then little pieces that look like islands. <laughs> That's the best way I can tell you. So they're all V's going into each other here. Then you take your marker and go ahead and mark your um, outlines. Don't worry if it's not perfect. The hardest part of this is doing irregular, messy shapes. You don't want them to be really, really neat and tidy. That's not how this is going to look. This is going to look like an old vintage zebra skin. So I use my little black thing here to go ahead and paint. And so you can see I paint these. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to cover the whole thing. Just paint it. You can always come back and touch it up, okay? So this is the first step. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Now, I've already started here. I take a little tiny bit of water down, and you're gonna tap it here. And then you're just gonna kinda start coming in here and laying down this aging. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see here, you just want to come in and age the background. You really don't want a lot of the cream showing, but I like this. I like using this type of a brush because I can really kind of move it around a little bit. See, I can kind of blend it over this way, blend it over this way, and you can come right across the black. As long as it's dried thoroughly, you can come right across the black and you want these areas. You can see how this is starting to look now. So you can pounce it on. 
You can wipe it on however you want to do it, but that's your watered down um, burnt umber, okay? So that's that step. All right, now I've kind of turned this sideways and I just want to show you, I like this just cut randomly. If you wanted to, you can make a table runner and make it very straight or a placemat or something, but I like the look of this thrown on the table, like it's all shredded and old. So you can see here, this is where we are now. So we've done some shading in here, black ink, um, watered down paint. And now we can start coming in and um, kind of edging the sides a little bit. See how I start adding some black to it? And you want to put add black and brown. And if you need to, a little cream until you finish it off like this. So this is the finished product here. You can see the aging is not really um, the same. Here I used a little bit of uh, gray paint. You can do one, you can highlight one side, wait, make one side darker and give it a three dimensional look. But that's how it should turn out and look. And like I said, this thrown on a table, like one piece going one way, another piece going another way would really look cool. All right, you guys, I hope you like this. I hope you're gonna paint some zebra skin yourself or any other animal print. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.